Hey everybody, my name's Steve. I'm a principal engineer in big tech and open source contributor enthusiast, and this is Linux by the way. Have you seen Fedora 40? Probably not, because it was just released. Let's check it out. We're gonna go ahead and install Fedora 40 on my Framework 13 AMD edition. If you haven't seen the video yet, I'll include a link right here. So go ahead and check that out. It's like an unboxing and I go through Linux installs and show some of the dongles and things like that. Also, if you haven't already, please go ahead and hit the like button and the subscribe button. It really helps the channel out and helps me make more content like this. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and boot up Fedora right now. You can see we got the cool framework logo and the Fedora logo, and then we have started up. All right, so what I've done is I've gone to the Fedora website, I've downloaded the image, put it in a USB key, and we booted off of that into a live environment. This is not installed in the hard drive, it's just running off the USB key and it's loaded in memory, but we can check all of our hardware. So if your screen looks weird, if you go up this menu here and you don't have like Wi-Fi or some crucial things missing, maybe take a minute and make sure your hardware is compatible. So I'm using the Framework 13 AMD edition, so I know it's compatible. And you can also check out various things like your hotkeys. So you can see here I'm adjusting the brightness and that all works. So we're pretty much good to go. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and start clicking through the installer. So we're gonna click install Fedora. In Fedora 39, they actually thought they were going to make a fully new revamped installer, but that didn't happen. So this installer probably looks familiar if you've ever installed Fedora before. It's been here for ages. And so we're just gonna go ahead and select our disk, which in this case is the nearly two terabyte Western Digital and make sure it has the check mark there. It's kind of the UI is a little odd. I also recommend encrypting your data. I'm not gonna do it for this one just because I can't really screen share the encryption password or anything. Uh, and I might put Ubuntu on uh, this in a little bit anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and click reclaim space and then begin installation. And this should be pretty fast. It's just gonna go ahead and bootstrap the system and install the packages. While you're waiting for this to install, you don't have to sit here and watch the screen. You can click around, do whatever you want. You could do one of my favorites, which is go ahead and pull open the terminal and then run top and you can see what your system's doing. So we have a pretty good load average there. We have most of our CPUs in idle, which is probably mostly due to, in this case, it's cutting an image, etc. But you can hit the one key and you will see all your threads and what they're doing. Pretty cool. I don't know, just like to check that out. And so you can see where the progress of the install is. And so in this case, we're doing gzip now and using a little more CPU. These 16 threads are from the AMD 7840U, which is the Framework 13 CPU option you can get. Pretty nice system. And there we go. We finished the installation. So that took roughly, roughly maybe five minutes. Not too big a deal. We're going to go ahead and reboot and check it out. All right, so we're all booted up and ready to rock, and we're gonna be greeted with the tour screen. It's mostly for new users, but also returning users can see what they've done. Uh, it only takes two seconds to click through. The first screen is gonna be the overview screen. So in this case, the overview does have a significant update, and that is that the search has changed. So in the past, it did search file contents, but now it searches everything. And so it's a new and improved thing. And so if we click fonts here, you can see it's gonna search for everything that sort of matches that. There's the font tweak tool, the gnome tweaks, font forge, etc. So that's pretty cool. And also if we search for that, we can find the accessibility here. So recording YouTube videos, a lot of the times the text is too small. So the first thing you wanna do is go ahead and increase that. And so we can just click large text. You can see here that works pretty well. It just kind of instantly transitions. The animations are nice and smooth. Everything looks good there. So we're gonna go ahead and click through this again. And oh, there's the search feature, there you go. So yeah, new and improved search, searches and finds a lot more things and hopefully faster. We have workspaces here. So we go ahead and hit the key and we can uh, check those out. We can do control out left and right to swap between them and help organize our apps and all that. Just an onboarding piece there. The gestures in Fedora 40 work really well. So. Uh, this three finger gesture is really helpful for getting an overview. Uh, it doesn't really make sense with just one application, but if I go ahead and I launch Firefox here, you can see how it's covering it up and you don't know what's going on. Where's my welcome screen? Three fingers up, boom, we have it. Nice smooth animation, looks really good. And if we do it again, we can see our application launcher. So all that works really well. I'm gonna go ahead and close Firefox here. And then this next one is for switching workspaces. So if we go three fingers left and three fingers right, that works really well also. So we can organize our windows, no problem there. And that's it, have a nice day, all right.
Fedora 40 updates the whole operating system, and so we have a lot of new packages. We have kernel 6.8, which is really important because it has all the newest drivers. On my System76 Lemur Pro, Fedora 39 was a pain to install, and Fedora 40 installs without any hassle or anything. It also has GNOME 46, which has a bunch of features I'm gonna cover, including UI enhancements, etc. And it also has updates to system packages, such as Go and Kubernetes, and all the different programming languages. Fedora 40 also brings with it KDE Plasma 6, and with KDE Plasma, they are defaulting to Wayland and have dropped the X11 session. The first thing you may wanna do is change the background. So we can just right click, change background, and we have a default or a dark mode setting. So we can click dark mode here, and you can see if we switch between them, um, it is nice and animated, very smooth, fluid. They've done a lot of work to make that look really good. And so you can see actually our default background also changes when we can do dark mode. It looks pretty nice. GNOME 46 includes an updated settings panel. So you can see different hardware details here and we can click system details and that will pop up showing the kernel version and memory and CPU and all that. Pretty nice there. And we can change our host name. So if we do this, now we have a newly named Linux by the way system, and you can check that out in the terminal also. One thing you'll notice from the settings that still hasn't made it is fractional scaling. So in this case, we have 100, we have 200 and 300. So if I put this on 200, you can see for a lot of displays, 200% is too big and 100% is too small. And so that can be a little frustrating for users. So hopefully in the future, we will land that fractional scaling support. For now, if you have a monitor that needs an in-between, you can set that manually, but it's not part of the GUI. So you will have to do a little bit of tweaking to make that happen. GNOME 46 also ships with updated notifications. So what I've done is I've opened Firefox up and I've went to the page of a very famous Linux YouTuber. And I'm also gonna hit the print screen key. And so you can see here, I'm gonna take a screenshot and the notification pops up and over the window, nice and animated, it looks very smooth. And then also if we open this, any unacknowledged notifications are gonna pop up here and they've done some work to make this look nicer. And then you can see our videos here also. The GNOME calendar has also received an update. So we can go ahead and launch that here and you can see that if we make an event, uh, we'll say install Linux. There we go, it looks, shows up there and there, and there's different views now. Uh, so we can go to our weekly view or monthly view. We have search and we have the new event dialogue. That's all been revamped, looks pretty nice. The software center looks good and it didn't fire up my fans when I opened it. So laptop's nice and quiet and I can browse all the software. They have a pretty comprehensive catalog here. So almost all the tools you need would be available and already packaged for you. And so we can check out like transmission and install that. It's a pretty quick process. So this is uh, just for the video and uh, I didn't do anything special, but you can see it takes maybe like 25 seconds for a, a smaller program to install, which is nice and efficient. I like the setup for installing updates. I went ahead and I went through the software center and I clicked update and restart. And so it took us to this screen. It gives the user a nice status and progress bar showing where we're at. Pretty quick for the first updates. All of that only took a, a minute or so to get through. If you selected yes for the third party repositories, you can install Steam right from the store here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. The logo is broken, but I think the install works. We'll let this run for a second. And there we go. So we're gonna open Steam up and that's gonna download the runtime environment. Um, if you want to too, you can open up the system monitor here and click resources. And then that will show you what you're doing. So like if you're running Steam and you're like, how fast are things going and how much resources are being used, you can check it all out from the system monitor, which I like to do from time to time, especially if something's not moving, then you can see, oh, I'm not downloading anything or I'm not writing to disk. In this case, we're downloading from the internet, big uh, 10 megabits a second there. If you're installing Steam, they also change the default scaling for 4K displays on that. So you might notice a difference. This is not a 4K display, so it's gonna be the standard uh, 1x scaling, but if you have a 4k display, it might be different. So we installed Steam and I'm going to install Streets of Rogue. Uh, I'm on the framework 13, so it's not exactly a uh, full-on gaming system. It does have the integrated AMD 680M graphics, uh, which can do some things. And I think this game will work okay, but it can't do like X4 or some of the you know, big 3D simulation. I pretty much game exclusively online, so I can tell people I run Linux, by the way. Now the Streets of Rogue is installed, let's go ahead and hit play and see how this does. So we will do that. Yeah, that's fine. And it looks good. 
and I have the FPS counter up at the top left. So you can see here, uh, it's mostly at 60 on this screen and it went down to like 43. Well, let's do a quick start game here. And it goes down to 34, uh, we'll pick that. And uh, this is definitely not like the most graphically intensive game, but it does, yeah, that's 60 FPS. So not bad, that's, uh, yeah, that's looking pretty good. You'll also see in the application launcher screen that the integration works. So we do have an icon here for the game that actually works if I click it. And that is not a given always whenever you install Steam. And so uh, good job to the Steam team or the, the GNOME team and Fedora team. One of those folks for actually making that work right off the bat. The software store also has a lot of other helpful third-party apps. So if we check this out, we got like Slack and we have uh, JetBrains products, so if you need PyCharm or IntelliJ, etc., that's all right here. I just installed VS Code a minute ago also, uh, and you can see here that it's from FlatHub. So if you have any uh, FlatHub software, it's probably showing up here. Let's go ahead and check out Visual Studio Code. So I'll pop that open. It asks us to choose a theme. Uh, that's fine. And then it also gives us this uh, flat pack warning. This can generally be ignored, but it's just good to know that when you're running these programs, they are in a semi sandboxed environment. A lot of the restrictions have probably been fairly relaxed because like Visual Studio Code is a, it's a dev tool. So it needs access to a lot of things, but you may see on other flat packs that maybe they don't have access to the full system. And that's because you generally don't want most applications to fully control your system. You may not want them to access your SSH keys or your password vault or things like that. While we're at it, let's also check the version of NeoVim. So we're do a DNF search NeoVim and we have that. And then let's also do DNF info NeoVim and that will tell us the version of it. And so we have zero to nine to five, which is a recent version. And that should work with like any of the configs you find online or anything. So good to go in that department also. One of the big critiques for GNOME is always that it tries to be so user-friendly that it doesn't let folks customize anything. And so in this case, uh, we have things like keyboard shortcuts now. And so I can type workspace here and I can set hotkeys and you can see that the UI looks pretty nice actually. And we can also do different customizations with multitasking. So we can turn off hot corners and active screen edges. And this uh, works pretty well also. So you can see we have nice animations here. And if you're familiar with like Windows, kind of similar to that actually, but it's good to see that they're bringing back some of the customizations even outside of the traditional GNOME tweak tool and putting it in the settings panel. A couple other quick notes, it has Microsoft OneDrive support and it also has an updated PyTorch. So if you're doing machine learning, you could actually use the OS's version of PyTorch. It's, it's relatively recent. The Fedora platform itself brings kernel 6.8 and there's been a lot of performance and driver enhancements there. So definitely a big improvement for those users. We also have the AMD ROCM 6.0 drivers. So if you're running AMD graphics, those should work a lot better now. And all in all, it's a much improved, much more refined system. I would definitely recommend Fedora to anybody who's starting out in Linux or even Linux experts, uh, especially if you like the GNOME desktop feeling. It definitely comes out of the box, kind of ready to go and can work with those workflows very easy. You can definitely customize it a thousand different ways also. So if you need to install i3, do things like you do in Arch, you can do it here. We don't have the same package repository as in Arch where you have the user repository where people package all sorts of software, but there's a ton of software. So it's definitely comprehensive and it has all of the heavy hitters from Slack to PyCharm to VS Code, almost any development tool you can think of. Overall, I'd say it's a great system. Definitely check it out. Let me know your feedback in the comments below and I'll catch you in the next one.